Good evening and welcome to State of Business on our television. I'm Nadun Sirivaldana. Let's have a look at the headlines. Central Bank decides to maintain deposit rates at over 8% and lending rates at above 9%. Korean government reaffirms commitment to support Sri Lanka's development efforts. News in detail. The Monetary Policy Board of the Central Bank of Sri Lanka has decided to maintain the standing deposit facility rate at 8.25% and the standing lending facility rate at 9.25%. This decision was taken during the board meeting last week. The board highlighted that inflation is expected to remain well below the target in the near term, with the potential for deflation due to reduced administrative prices and easing supply conditions. On the economic growth front, CBSL noted that Sri Lanka's economy grew by 4.7% year-on-year in the second quarter of 2024, building on 5.3% growth recorded in quarter 1 of 2024. The expansion of private sector credit by licensed commercial banks since May 2024, supported by declining market lending interest rates, has been broad-based across major sectors. However, tourism earnings and worker remittances improved during this period, helping to bolster the external current account. The Sri Lankan rupee appreciated by over 7% against the US dollar in 2024, and the central bank has accumulated $6 billion in gross official reserves by the end of August 2024. The board affirmed that the current accommodative monetary policy is driving lower interest rates and contributing to the recovery of domestic economic activity. Central Bank Governor Dr. Nandalal Virasinghe said that the Treasury bonds and bill auction saw a surge in value over the recent weeks. But it is expected to fall because of the heavy borrowing requirement has now eased. The Central Bank Governor said this speaking at the Monetary Policy Review of the Central Bank in Colombo last week. What we have seen um, last couple of months, there were large auction sizes and government have, has been raising a full amounts of weekly treasury bills and also some treasury bonds to, to a large extent, 100% of the market. Then as a result, uh, there have been some uptick uh, in the market risk uh, in the short term. But we have seen the heavy borrowing requirements have now eased from the last month. I think last month there was the largest bond auction happened. Uh, now, I think going forward, what you can see uh, the financial requirements are kind of uh, uh, lower than what we think. Bill auctions and bond auctions, I think that will already we have seen some of the, and also the speculation. Because when there is uh, large bonds uh, sizes uh, you know, coming out, obviously market circulate and take position and that has, you know, I think last bill auction, we have seen the turning around, we would expect uh, the, with the lower bond sizes of financial requirement domestic market from the government, I think those will fall in line with our monetary policy uh, uh, interest rates. Uh, that's obviously the short term variation can happen all the time. Week on week basis, government bill, bill rates can go up and down, but overall trend we can still see that trend will follow. Speaking further at the press conference, Central Bank Governor Dr. Nandalal Virasinghe said that the Central Bank will be committed to maintaining a low and stable inflation rate and building external buffers where foreign exchange is concerned. He said that the exchange rate will be determined to the market taking into consideration the demand and supply and the Central Bank will intervene only in cases of high volatility. How the exchange rate is determined? Uh, in our current monetary policy framework is obviously uh, determined through market demand and supply and also other key macro factors, the current account balance, remittances, foreign exchange earnings, uh, exports and uh, uh, tourism right now, they are doing well. And in addition, if there are any investment inflows and outflows and also level of reserves that we have. so. On that basis, but your observation, I'm not quite sure international investors are looking at the exchange rate and determine how it can be performance. I think that's, in, in our view, is not the right way to look at the, the country's economic performance. It's mainly key economic indicators within our control. So our responsibility is to maintain inflation at low and stable level that as we agreed with the 
that is the key mandate that central bank has so we are trying to maintain inflation within those targets exchange rate will be determined by the market forces the short term volatility uh, changes can happen but only thing what we do is to intervene uh, to smoothen out uh, any kind of a uh, sharp volatility and let in the market to determine the exchange rate based on demand and supply while also trying to build up the external buffers in terms of foreign exchange so i think if any international investor is interested i think i would uh, suggest that they need to look at all the key macroeconomic fundamentals stay tuned we will return after this commercial break Welcome back. Tourist arrivals to Sri Lanka crossed the 100,000 mark in August, according to the provisional data from Sri Lanka Tourism Development Authority. With an average of 4,000 daily arrivals and weekly influx of about 26,000 tourists, the milestone was crossed on August 24th. The top source for tourist traffic for Sri Lanka in August was India, contributing 21.6% of total arrivals. The United Kingdom followed with 7.4% and Germany ranked third at 6.9%. Other significant contributors included China, Australia, Spain and Bangladesh. Tourist arrivals had been affected in recent weeks due to the suspension of the visa issuance system managed by the VFS Global Consortium following a directive from the Supreme Court. The government has since reactivated the electronic travel authorization system managed by Mobitel offering relief to the tourism sector as the upcoming season approaches. This development is expected to ease the challenges that had concerned stakeholders in the industry. The Korean government has reaffirmed its commitment to supporting Sri Lanka's transparency and anti-corruption efforts under the new presidency of Anura Kumar Adisanayake. This agreement was reached during a meeting with Secretary to the President Dr. Nandika Sanath Kumar Nayake at the Presidential Secretariat last week. A delegation of high-ranking officials from the Korea International Cooperation Agency expressed their willingness to provide loan assistance for initiatives aimed at combating fraud and corruption in Sri Lanka. The COICA officials emphasized their intent to tailor loan support based on the country's specific needs, reflecting their strong backing of Sri Lanka's transparency agenda. The meeting was attended by several key figures including Korean ambassador to Sri Lanka Myon Lee, deputy ambassador Song Yi Jong, Koika Sri Lanka country director Kim Myung Jing and officials from Sri Lanka Railways and Demo. Now US ambassador Julie J Chang has reaffirmed the American government's commitment to strengthening bilateral ties with Sri Lanka under President Anura Kumar Adisanayake's administration emphasizing economic growth and reform. Addressing the 32nd annual general meeting of the American Chamber of Commerce, she expressed optimism in attracting foreign direct investment and promoting transparency in business practices. Ambassador Chang congratulated both President Disanayake and Prime Minister Harani Amarasuriya, noting that Amarasuriya's historic appointment serves as an inspiration for women across Sri Lanka. She highlighted the importance of creating a stable and transparent business environment to spur economic growth, job creation and sustainable investments. Recognizing the United States as Sri Lanka's largest export market, she underscored the need to build productivity and capacity for exports, with Amcham playing a pivotal role in this development. She also stressed the importance of Sri Lanka adhering to the IMF program, particularly focusing on governance reforms, addressing inefficiencies in state-owned enterprises, and enhancing anti-corruption measures to foster an inclusive economy. Stay tuned for the stock update. Trend 
Trading at Colombo Stock Exchange ended on positive notes today. The All Share Price Index gained by 81.17 points to close at 11,855.05, and the S&P SL20 gained by 49.51 points to close at 3,459.41. The turnover was 2.6 billion rupees, and over 126 million shares were traded. Up next are forex rates. That's all our news for today. For this and more, subscribe to our channel on YouTube and follow us on Facebook. Take care and good night.